Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. Something we look forward to at the start of a new FIFA every single year is the 10-hour early access EA Play trial where you get to play the full game of FIFA before, like a week and a half before, it is supposed to drop to the world. Now, something about that in FIFA 23 is changing and I want to tell you why it's almost not even worth it to have the 10-hour early access this year in FIFA 23 and also how with this change of dates and the release dates of when you can get on the game, the web app is going to be even more important and incredibly different than in years past on FIFA. So we're going to talk about all that today and more. If you're excited for the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. Let's start with the details, right? What's going on with this 10 hours of early access and EA Play? Here's the details right here. You might know and remember that this EA Play early access thing has been something that's been going on for a long time. EA Play is the new name. I think two years ago they renamed it from EA Access to EA Play. And this is on their website, FIFA 23 Early Access. Get on the pitch days before launch when your 10-hour trial of FIFA 23 unlocks September 27th. That date might sound familiar to you. It's because it is. That is the same day that if you have bought the Ultimate Edition of FIFA 23, that is the same day that you will be getting on your PC, your PlayStation, or your Xbox and playing FIFA for the first time with the Ultimate Edition. So there's really no advantage to having a 10-hour early access or buying EA Play because that release coincides the same day when you would get the full game anyway with the Ultimate Edition. And that's where the big issue is this year. For most people that play the Ultimate Edition of FIFA and then are paying a little bit extra to get all of these rewards and everything that is a bonus of the Ultimate Edition, the 10 hours early access is really not even worth it. Now, okay, you could make your argument. If you're somebody who just plays the Standard Edition of FIFA, this 10 hour early access, even though it's you know only a couple days before the global release on the September 30th date, when the whole game of FIFA 23 will be open for everybody, you could still get the 10 hour early access and start the game on that same day, and it could be worth it for you. But that's kind of the only way that it's worth it this year. And it's creating this really weird scenario with the web app because EA did not delay the web app like they did delay the 10 hour early access, right? We talked about it a couple days ago. The Foot 23 web app is actually shutting down today on Friday, the 16th of September. The web app is going away. And on the 21st of September, the FIFA 23 web app will come online, right? So September 21st, and then our next date is September 27th. What this is really starting to pose here and, and what situation is kind of at hand is that we have this big gap of time where we're only going to be able to be on the web app where in years past, it was so much fun to get on the new FIFA. You could go and do your trading and do your SBCs and you know try to build your squad on the web app. And then you could use your 10 hours very sparingly on the console and still play the game because usually the web app and the 10 hours early access would start at the same time. But this year, it's going to be incredibly different. It used to be fun to play FIFA early for that limited amount of time, and now we're just gonna only be able to be on the web app for literally six days before we can get on the Ultimate Edition if you pre-ordered that on the September 27th date. So that's the issue. And that's why it really, it's worth saying that the EA Play 10 hour access is not really worth it this year. I have EA Play because it gave you a 10% discount when you bought the game. But honestly, if you did that, you might as well just go and cancel it because you'll get your money back and uh, the 10 hour early trial is, is just not worth it this year. Um, again, EA Play does have some other benefits, but I don't buy FIFA points. So that benefit there is obviously not for me. And for a lot of you guys that don't spend FIFA points, you know, that's neither here nor there. So go ahead and cancel that. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same and it'll save you, get some money back. Of course, you got that discount and you'll be good to go. Uh, and you don't need that 10 hours of early access. Now, the bigger question that this is starting to pose and that we're starting to think about as we plan and, you know, just kind of see how the web app's gonna play out this year, what is that gonna mean? Only having six days, well, not only having, having a total of six days, that's actually a lot of time where there will be people opening their FIFA 23 accounts for the first time, logging into the web app, getting into the game, opening packs, doing SPCs, getting players, maybe starting to build a little bit of a squad, and of course, starting to trade, that's gonna get old and it's just gonna be a lot of time where we can do everything but play the game or play the new foot moments game mode 
and it, I, I think it's going to get old. I think it's going to get tiresome and it's just going to create a very, especially on the market, it's going to create a really stagnant kind of place to be. I do think there might be one brand new feature, which we talked about as well. FIFA points, being able to open packs in the web app and add FIFA points from the web app screen. I think that is very possible this year, but that's still an unknown as of right now. Maybe we'll get some light shed on that through some brand new pitch notes in the next couple of days. But I just want to talk about this whole time frame and this whole scenario as you start our FIFA, as we start our FIFA Ultimate teams this year, because this is actually really, really big. Every single year before this in years past, we have had EA Play going all on at the same time as the web app. So there's been some gameplay demand where people could go onto the web app, they could build their team, right? They could fix up their squad, they could make coins, do SBCs, and then, you know, of course, get their team and then go on to the game and actually play. But now we're only going to have the web app for us in six days and nothing else to do. It's going to be a grind. It is really going to be a grind, especially once you get all your SBCs done, right? What do we do at the beginning? We just talked about it in the how to start FIFA 23 video. You go into the store, you open up your welcome backpacks, and then you go and do some of the advanced SBCs. You start with the basic SBCs, then you do your advanced ones to get packs and hopefully make some coins off of those packs. But once you get those SBCs done, which we have one, two, three, uh, you know, hybrid leagues, hybrid nations, league and nation hybrid, you have those three advanced SBCs, you have the get started SBC, which is the one you have to do first to unlock all the others. And then you have one, two, three other really basic SBCs that might even not really be worth doing at that first stage. But once you get those, let's say you do all of them, let's say you get those six SBCs done, then what do you do? I mean, you can trade, but at that stage, everybody else is going to kind of be stuck. And when you're thinking about where the supply and the demand is going to be on the market, there's not going to be any demand for people to go out and to buy cards like a brand new 88 rated and Kunku card that they may want to buy for their team. Uh, you know, that's a card that a lot of people are, are going to want to go and buy, right? The, the brand new and or the or the brand new Kingsley Coman, just using two new five star skill examples there. As we get these FIFA 23 ratings released, there's going to be no gameplay demand. That's going to make the market a very, very different place. And it's still going to be a good place to trade, though. Don't get me wrong, especially in those first couple days of the web app, there's going to be a lot of hype for the SBCs that people are going to be getting done because let's face it, right? You know, depending on how much time you put into the web app each and every day, you maybe won't get all the SBCs done day one. Maybe it takes you one or two days to get the hybrid leagues, hybrid nations done, you know, and then after that, okay, it's more like now we have three to four days of just time on the web app where we can do stuff and maybe trade on the market, but there's no gameplay demand. And again, that's where it's going to get just really weird this year. It's going to feel really stagnant. I I can almost see it already, but we're all going to be like on FIFA and in that mode where we want to grind and we want to trade and we want to be trading with these bronze, silver and gold cards to try to make coins because yes, of course, people will still be doing those uh, advanced SBCs, but the way that I'm thinking about this right now, the first two to three days of the, of the web app time period from the 21st to like the 23rd or 24th are going to be crucial for making coins because that's when most of your SBC demand and will be there. I mean, think about it, right? When SBC values go up, I mean, even we saw this in FIFA 22, right? When a big SBC comes out, uh, like let's say a 93 moments player pick for most of the year, um, icon player picks are pretty hyped. Your SBC fodder goes up like immediately, right? After a big SBC is dropped, your cards go up in value pretty fast. That's because most people are completing an SBC in a, the short time period after it was released. Probably let's say like what? The first you know, 12 hours to 24 hours is when I would imagine at least like 80% of people would complete an, an upgrade SBC like that, especially if it's just packs to get a pack and it's, you know, a couple squads to do pretty easy to get done. It's going to be completed right away, right? And then of course, as more people have got that done every single day, less and less people are doing those SBCs, I think it's going to be the same way during the web app. And what it's going to end up being at the end is just a whole bunch of people that are trading on the web app, selling and buying their cards to each other, thinking that they can potentially make profit. It's going to be harder towards the end to make a profit unless you're looking in the right areas and have some really good methods down because that demand is just going to be lessening and lessening the further that we go on. 
in the SBC realm. Now, again, as I'm, I'm talking about, talked about the Nkuku example, right? Yes, you could say, okay, people are going to go, you know, open their welcome backpacks, do the SBCs, and then they might go start to buy cards off the market. Well, yes, that's true as well. But let's add in the other caveat here that we mentioned before, FIFA points. If FIFA points are available to be purchased, to be bought, and then to be opened on the web app as well, you are going to have consistent supply every single day of all the cards that are in packs, whether it's the SBC fodder cards, or of course, you know, your people that are gonna get insanely lucky and pack the Ronaldo, the Messi, the Mbappe, the Neymar, the Vinny Jr. All those cards are gonna be getting supplied, but there won't be any demand and their prices are absolutely going to get cheap. And also you throw in a third uh, aspect to this that's brand new is we have a whole brand new market this year with Xbox and with PC coming together on the same market. There's going to be probably more supply, but also more demand at the same time than ever for all this stuff. So it's going to be crazy, but it's, it's going to be a new learning experience. And that's why I wanted to make this video today and just kind of, you know, make sure that you guys were thinking about this and put it into perspective just about how weird and different it's going to be this year. Um, just because of the way that these dates are, right? We were used to going in here. Uh, you know, th think about how we're going to start FIFA this year, right? With with 23. I don't know when we're going to be able to pre-download it on our consoles and stuff, but we were used to going into the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store, finding your EA Play subscription and like downloading the game from here and it was a race to get it downloaded. And then your 10 hour trial would start when you opened the game up and got into Ultimate Team. Then you had to make sure to like close out of the game and stuff. I mean, like just for so many people this year, that's not gonna matter because everybody, not everybody, I keep saying everybody, but it's not true. Just a lot of people have bought the ultimate edition and that 10 hour access is just not gonna be, you know, something that they will be participating in because they will already be on the game. So that's really what the main point of this video is today and just talking about this because it's going to be a whole different mindset. And I mean, we don't exactly know how it's going to go down. We can only theorize and, and project as of right now. But again, the stuff we talked about, right? Everybody's going to lose their demand for these SBCs and it's just going to end up people trading between one another. And the goal really is, if you think about it, the goal is to get as many coins as possible because once we get to the later stages of the web app only period. That's kind of what we're gonna to have to call these these couple of the six days, right? Between when the web app comes out and when the game is released, the web app period, if you will. What the goal is going to be if you're a trader and trying to make the most coins as possible, which a lot of us are, we're gonna to try to get as many coins as we can to then go ahead and invest for the market rise that will most likely happen on the most meta popular cards when the 4,600 FIFA points and the 27th date, like when we get on the game. Because again, right, once people get on the game for the first time, they open up their FIFA points that are, of course, part of the pre-order bonuses. And then, you know, the market just kind of takes off on the most meta and the most valuable and rare players that people are going to go out and buy for their teams, right? We looked at it in, in uh, yesterday's video about the 4,600 FIFA points. What happened with this Chelsea Raheem Sterling last year? Actually, just kidding, the Manchester City Raheem Sterling. I was already getting ready for FIFA 23. Raheem Sterling was on Sunday, right before the FIFA points got released, 55K. Everybody gets on the game. He goes to 75K. It's his peak price for the year in that first couple of days. Again, that's just going to be different this year because new market and maybe with FIFA points being opened up during the web app, that could create some more supply on the market as well. You know, just even thinking about that that rise that everybody talks about that we expect to happen every year when the early access drops on on the 27th or the, or the ten, when the 10 hours drop on the 27th as well. That's when people start opening their packs and getting coins. Could that be hindered this year if you can buy FIFA points on the app? I think that it could be. You're really going to have to to watch cards. You know, our example in yesterday's video again was Alan St. Maximin, right? His gold card that was 79 rated went from 20,000 coins all the way up to 28K in a span of two days. After that ultimate edition access opened up and people started spending their FIFA points and getting on the game, could those rises on the lower tier cards that would just get supplied more and more and more be smaller or maybe you wouldn't have as much of a rise at all if that supply is continuously coming in from the FIFA points on the web app. So again, I know we're just kind of talking 10,000 foot level uh, of market stuff right now because we're not actually in the game, on the game and, and seeing and watching how it goes. But I mean, I'm excited to get on the game, but I'm also just, again, I'm so curious 
to see how this is going to feel on the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth day of the web app after most people get all their SBCs done and we kind of move on and move forward from that point. So one thing I would say though is watch for some updated news and information because we are awaiting some pitch notes from EA Sports and usually these like, what's it called? Like the launch update pitch notes. They dropped them the past two years. It, it could even be today on Friday. We get, we get those pitch notes. That would be a really big piece of information that would tell us a lot about the start of FIFA 23 because last year we learned about ones to watch. We learned about the new featured team of the week boost. We learned about foot heroes. And I think that there's so much information that we're still lacking and we need to know um, about maybe some of the foot moments or about ones to watch in general. We'll probably get some more ones to watch information. Maybe they'll tell us some more cards that are going to be a part of that first week promo. Uh, of course, they'll tell us how long we have to save our ones to watch packs. If you want to pack a player from team one or team two or from either team one or team two, right? You guys maybe remember that uh, from last year as well. So I'm really looking out for and expecting some sort of communication from EA Sports over this weekend before the web app drops, um, because we're supposed to also get the database on Sunday and that'll really kickstart the hype for building starter teams and stuff like that. Of course, we've been getting some ratings and this is where the database should be um, on the FIFA 23 website features or ultimate team ratings. This is where it should be. But right now they only still have the top 23 players listed here, even though they've been dropping more ratings, right? We've, we got the five star skillers yesterday. We got the Bundesliga players. We've they're kind of circulating through the top five leagues. We don't actually have a database yet that it rumored is the rumored release date for that is Sunday. So maybe in some pitch notes today on Friday or tomorrow on Saturday, or I guess sometime in the next couple of days before the web app, we could get some more information on FIFA 23. And that will be potentially crucial to figuring out how this early game stage is going to go. But again, it kind of makes sense, right? We have this long period of web app where before we were able to play the game, right? In FIFA 22, we were able to play the game with a 10 hours that started on the same day as the web app this year not so much. So it's going to be a completely different year this year, new market, new chemistry style, new position changes, and new early game time schedule with the web app not syncing up with those 10 hours of EA play early access. So we're going to get as we get closer and closer, we're going to dive deep into the details. And as we learn more from pitch notes, and especially as we get on the game, we're going to get a real feel for how this goes. But right now, all that we can expect is a lot of supply early on and just not as much demand except for SBCs. It's gonna be a very interesting scenario for all of the meta prices on the market, but also trying to make coins when it's a very, I don't know, competition heavy environment is kind of, might, might be what it feels like in that early stage of FIFA 23. So if this video helped you out today or if you enjoyed it and wanna learn more, hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're new. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. I'll be checking some of those out down there. But I'll see you in a video tomorrow. It's been Nate, the Foot Account, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.